thanks for staying with us now every business has one thing top of mind and that is how do we satisfy our customer as this not only ensure a repeat sale it also creates a brand ambassador and promoter for the brand as businesses a lot of us or, or a lot is put in place to ensure customers leave the business premises happy but as we saw yesterday online, I don't know how many people caught that video because she's deleted <laughs> it, in a particular eatery where a top event planner visited not, um, visited, not all staff are equipped, yes, to manage a customer's expectation because mm -hmm. she did a video and the manager in that branch did not manage her expectations well. So today we want to learn first as businesses, what do we need to do to attract customers and retain them? Mm -hmm. Secondly, as a customer, what keeps you glued to a business? Is it solely tied to service? Yes, that's the question. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-8463. I'm going to bring in Uti in two minutes. Mm -hmm. I want to hear you. What would make you stay with a brand? What would keep you with a business? Like go back and keep patronizing them all over again. If when they are polite to me, when they give me um, good service in terms of what I've asked for is being given to me, prompt service will make me go back. Mm. And another thing is that in Nigeria, there is something we usually do. We go into a place with whatever baggage we have in our heart and we, you know, just unleash it out on the uh, customer service individual that is there. And mm. you, sometimes the customer service individual is also human. So what I do also is when I walk into a place, I greet the customer service individual. I even try to make the person smile so that I will get good service. So <laughs> it's so important. Yes, it's a symbiotic relationship. It's not about that. It's a symbiotic relationship So hold on. Me. I th I'm so happy that Uti is inside this conversation. It's not about that. You see, this thing, mm -hmm. you have to separate mm. this Nigerian mentality because this is the <laughs> typical no, Nigerian I was thing. going to talk about hold the Nigerian on. mentality as well. The, the Nigerian mentality is so important because of the culture we have. Mm. Utielu talk. No, she's not <laughs> going to talk yet. I've not called her yet. It is me and you. Now, let me explain something to you. I don't know how you are paid for a job. Exactly. You are, in, in, you are behind the desk of a business. You represent a business. I remember, mm -hmm. I remember one of my husband's friends went to a pl particular place and said, ah, Maybe he walked in, they mm. say, I've come to pay your salary. It's, it's a place where we pay <laughs> monthly subscription, mm -hmm. a cable network. Mm -hmm. He told the person there, I've come to pay your salary. Exactly. Imagine if you understand that that money that is coming out of that customer's pocket is your salary. Totally. Do you think you're going to act? Whether, you, whether the person greets totally. you or not, it's regardless. Totally. Do you understand? I but let agree. me agree. <laughs> I agree with let you. Me bring but like I said, it's a two way street. I beg. It's a symbiotic relationship. Wait, see. Mm. Let me bring Uti mm -hmm. in. So, Uti Elu, in case you do not know, let me reintroduce her to you. She <laughs> has over 15 years' experience in various disciplines, including customer experience, customer service, mm. customer loyalty, customer engagement, and training, both in public and private sectors across two continents. So, all things customer, she's your go to expert. So, thank you again, Uti Elu for doubling as a guest and a co-anchor. Yeah. <laughs> so, Uti, did I do well, you know? You know, right now you're my customer. So did I do well, you know, making you feel good about the brand ways? Yeah, you sure did. <laughs> oh, so you Uti. sure did, it was a good experience. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting what um, Isi just said, right? Exactly. And I see this play out all the time, oh. you know? Are we supposed to, as a business, are we supposed to expect the customers to be nice to us before we deliver on the quality of the service that we deliver? That's not the angle. Though, Wait, so, so, I mean, the, the, the simple answer to that question is think about just how you want to be treated. Thank you. You always want to be treated in, you know, the way you would want to treat someone else. Let me mm -hmm. put it that way. Mm -hmm. So why should it be any different when it comes to business? Well, the important thing there is the person can walk away. The person can decide, considering that you're not a charity, you're not an NGO, you're in business to make money, then you, not, you now need to decide how you want to manage those people that come into your business, how you want to manage the people that interact with your business. There's so many different you know, elements to this. There's so many different um, angles and approaches to this. But the reality of it is, in today's world where we have social media, where we have technology, where we have devices, in all of that, the competition is so heightened. 
it's not like before when there was one, two, three, maybe four businesses in your local area or in your state that offer the service. Now your competition is global. Mm -hmm. You can lose business to another company that has never heard of you halfway around the world in China. So the reality of it is, why are you in business? What are your objectives for doing business? And then that drives how you deal with your customer. Because we had um, an interesting conversation today yes. um, when, when Timmy was sharing some of the experiences. Exactly. And I said, well, this is classic. The customer assumes I'm always right. The customer expects that they are always right. Guess what? The customer is always right. What is the key thing there? Is that customer your customer? Hmm. Your customer, the one that is for your business, is always right. Not every customer, however, is, is your, your customer. customer. So I'll stop there. Ha. <laughs> How do you then identify which one is your own or not? This one that wants so, to sell market. <laughs> so, so Uti, so what's the role of competence and customer service? and customer experience. How do, we how do we marry these in customer service relationship? Okay. So, I mean, that's a great question and, and probably speaks to the story that Uwa was referring to, to yesterday. Sadly, I didn't catch the video before it was taken down, um, but I understand that there was an issue with the manager of the business. Competency is key, but again, before I even talk about competency, I, would, I just want to clarify certain things because these phrases are used um, interchangeably. Exactly. Customer service, customer experience, different things. Customer service is reactive. There must be a customer, there must be a need for you to deliver service. Customer experience is proactive. So there's a choice that a business makes hmm. that the leaders in a business or the owner in a business needs to sit down and define how they want to treat their customers. When you don't do that, it's like wanting to build a house and not having an architect build your, design your plan. Exactly. And you just say to the builders, build me a four bedroom house. What are you going to get? Some builder is thinking he's building a bungalow. Another builder thinks he's building a duplex. Mm -hmm. What you end up with at the end of the day is, is just the waste of materials. That's the same thing when it comes to customer service, when it comes to dealing with customers. Every business has to have a customer experience strategy. Now, why is that important to answering your question? It allows you to understand what competencies are required to deliver that customer experience. Now, two very different examples. The lady who is selling granite on her head in traffic, she has customers, she's selling it. The supermarket who is selling granites, they also have customers selling the product. But the experience is very different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The lady who is in traffic, her own urgency, her experience is it's quick. It has to be fast. The car is moving. Traffic is moving. The guy doesn't want too much story. Have it already packaged, ready to give it to me. Have change ready, and I move on. I'm not interested in whether you greet me, you ask me how is my exactly. day. Exactly. On to the next customer. But when you go into a supermarket, <laughs> mm. right? You have the peanuts, you expect to stand in queue, you expect to pay, you expect the lady to smile at you, give you a receipt, package it for you in a bag, and give it to you. Two very different things. One is speed and accuracy, another one. So that's customer experience. Because imagine if the girl is standing there greeting you, asking you how was your day, and then traffic changes and everybody's honking. She probably will lose a sale. Mm -hmm. So when you bring that into competency, you have to have the right people for the job. Exactly. There's a common misconception that anybody can do customer service. I mean, typically that's where most people's careers start, right? Mm -hmm. You go into a customer service job, that's where you get your experience, you cut your teeth. But the truth of it is that not everybody can do customer experience. It takes a certain kind of person to be able to deliver service. Mm -hmm. When you go into a restaurant or you go into a shop and you see a, a difficult customer or an irate customer, mm -hmm. some people will think to themselves at that point in time, man, I can't do this job. Exactly. So many people tell me, Uti, I can't do your job. So the reality of it is, there is actually certain characteristics within people as to whether they can actually deliver good customer service as a role, as an expectation, as a job. Then there is also the requirement of the organization. You must teach people. If in that restaurant where we had that occurrence yesterday, 
there was a proper definition of how you should behave, how you expect it. Not necessarily telling you the words to say, because some organizations will do that and then it starts to sound robotic. Hmm. But understanding what the business's objective is for their clients. What is the experience? When they come into this restaurant, how do we want them to feel? How do we want them to interact with our products? That's why these businesses are branded. This is why they're designed in a certain way. All of that goes into the experience. But most of the time, we just leave it. Or we have the basic, or oh, smile, greets the customer. And then when the, when the person is um, encounters a situation that they've not been trained for, exactly. then you Training. have those kind of experiences. And in this country, a lot of people haven't been trained for uh, it. Absolutely. Especially when you're dealing with Nigerians. As the I totally agree with you Ooh. on that. You would expect that a manager of a particular, um, what's it called, branch of a business must have gone through different stages of training, training. for you to even rise to the position of being a manager, mm -hmm. right? So I don't know how I'm going to ask this question. In terms of crisis management and customer satisfaction and customer experience, right? The way you have that experience, in, within that strategy, should there be a should there be something separate, you know, for crisis management? Or be how do I even explain the question? Because in this situation, right, there was a global problem that the the, the business had all or all around, you know, all their branches in Nigeria. But is it that the, the the manager of that business was not carried along, you know? So what? Maybe where, where do I tie? Let me put the question. Where do I tie communication in terms of crisis management per time? And how do you even get the right people to think on their feet when it has to do with specific situations and challenges of? Actually, when maybe if you have challenging customers, this one wasn't really a challenging customer. But if you do have a challenging customer, how do you tie up that communication line well, you know, to be able to handle the matter? Great. So, I mean, remember why it's important to distinguish oh, another question that highlights why it's important to distinguish service from experience. Mm. You can't have customer experience without having the branding and communication side of it. Mm -hmm. they, they work hand in hand, right? Yeah. So customer experience, there's that question that says, when does customer experience start? When do you start to experience a business? Well, it's when you have a need. If you need a phone, if you need to make a call, you need a phone. When you need a phone, how do you buy a phone? Probably ask someone, or you go online, or you go to a shop. The communication or marketing team of that organization is the one that ensures that that information about that phone is on the website, it's on the internet, that when you get to the shop, you can find the shop. The shop is branded, right? There are signs on the shops. That is all down to the branding and communication element of the business. Mm -hmm. So in this question that you've asked, yes, in customer experience, there will be someone responsible that says, when there is a global problem or when there's a problem that affects the entirety of the business, it is possible that the manager wasn't even aware there was a problem until the customer brought it to their attention. Hmm. So has somebody notified everybody in that business that this problem occur exists? Hmm. Has somebody told each person in that business that when you encounter this problem or you encounter a customer that has this problem, this is what you should communicate to them mm -hmm. and this is how you should deal with it. Yeah. Because a huge part of dealing with customers is expectations management. Mm -hmm. exactly. There is no human, every human being is a customer somewhere to someone. Mm -hmm. And there is no person that expects that things won't go wrong. So it's not about the fact that there was a problem. It's about how you manage the problem, how you manage the customer's expectations in relation to that problem. Mm -hmm. So even when you come across a difficult customer, one, you're adequately prepared, which comes back to competency, right? I know this problem exists. I know why it exists, because what, when that happens, typically, what do they say? This issue has happened, or why has it happened? This is why it's happened. You have, you know, not necessarily a script, but you're informed as to what the issue is. You probably are given some guidelines as to maybe timelines for resolution. When will this problem end? If this problem exists, what does it prevent our customers from doing? Hmm. What alternatives have we put into place? Yeah. This is all customer experience. But what you find is that that staff probably had none of this information. And then he's faced with an irate customer. Hmm. Exactly. He doesn't know what to say. And he reacts. And that's what happens typically with Nigerians. We just react. Mm -hmm. exactly. And let's not forget that. You know, we, say this, we say this, you know, with all pomp that he's a manager. Hmm. This is an eatery in Lagos. This person is probably not paid 100,000. Mm. If he's paid well, he's probably paid 150,000. You get what you pay for, by the way. <laughs> so when you don't pay your staff well, 
don't expect them to move mountains for you. Exactly. That is hmm. that if that happens, that is because that person intrinsically is that kind of person with good work ethic. Okay. Mm. But don't expect them to move mountains. So, just so again, when we play manager and we have all these expectations, it's important to note that there's a certain type of person that works in that kind of job. And it's not to say that they're not exceptional people because I have worked with some very amazing security guards who are, you know, earning very, very small amounts of money. But the reality of it is that person was in that situation and it could have been handled better. Okay, so... Um... Let me just take a few comments, then we'll now go on a break. <laughs> <laughs> because this is why you talked about money, Uti. Money should not be your motivation. If you cannot, if you, wait, if it's, a, if it's a company that you're why supposed not? to be, hold on now. If it's a company that you're supposed to be giving smiles to people. Mm -hmm. And they, when they employed you, they said this was the amount they were going to pay you a salary to be smiling to people. You don't have a choice. You have to be smiling to the people when they come. Mm -hmm. Right? And you must no, make so, well, I didn't mean that money was the motivation. That's not what I meant. Yeah, so what do you mean? What I meant is... The, the substance of the person, mm. right? So if you wanted to hire a doctor, you wouldn't ask for OND um, holders or you wouldn't ask for people who have law degrees, mm. right? You would ask for people who are suitably qualified, who have all the required skills to handle this. Yeah. In a lot of job roles, you see the kind of qualifications that are being asked for or needed may not necessarily be at the level at which you will have an expectation for that job. Hmm. So most times when you have people hire shop girls, they just look for somebody who has finished secondary school. Yes. Hmm. Now, the finesse that that person is going to have, hmm. unless you have really taken the time to train that person, drill that person, that person, and by the way, have hired somebody with the right basic characteristics coming yeah. in, it's hmm. not going to work. Huh, okay. So it's not about money being the motivator for the person to do well. It's about hiring the right hiring kind of right person here yeah, for the job. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take a break. We're going to take the questions. When we come back, we'll take the comments from our audience and we'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>